Oh, DVDs, let's take a look at my DVDs, my magic collection of DVDs. Hello there, how's it going? My name's Adam and welcome to Aduda Reviews. Today I'm going to be looking at my 4K collection and my Blu-ray collection. I know I did a video fairly recently about this, but um, I've collected a load since then because I've been scouring all the like charity shops and places like that and getting cheap DVDs. So I've got quite a few extra. Um, and instead of like just doing those, because I can't really remember what was in the last video, so I'm just going to go through them all again. But hey, it's all good. It's fun. American Werewolf in London. This is a fantastic film. It's directed by John Landis. It came out late 70s, early 80s. I can't remember exactly the year. Um, but it was a fantastic film, especially the transformation scene. And I think it's yet to be bested like for a werewolf film. I don't think there's better than this John Landis, American Werewolf in London. It's a great film. And it's a classic for a reason. This is like a modern horror. And I wouldn't say classic because it's, it's definitely not quite up to that level. But it's Pearl and it's a good it was a good film. It hasn't held up as well as I had hoped. I still prefer the original film called X. This is part of a trilogy. The third Maxine is yet to come out, but she's been a little bit of hot water recently because she apparently kicked a co-star in the head, or not co-star, uh, an extra in the head, and the extra is pretty pissed off about it. So this Mia Goth, but she is really good in this film and she has a really good monologue in the film. And yeah, it's a good film, but not like amazing or anything. It hasn't held up quite as well as I'd hoped. Split, James McAvoy, really good film. He's a really good actor in this. Like a crazy sort of psychological horror way. The guy with split personality. Green Room, this is a really good sort of tense kind of horror-y type situation where a punk band uh, plays for a bunch of Nazis and they didn't realise they're a bunch of Nazis and they get stuck in this room and it's really tense and it's really good. It's a really good film and it stars the late great Anton Yelchin. Really good film. The Wolf of Wall Street, hilarious, um, fantastic, just loads of crazy scenes that stick out in your mind. And obviously, it's got some fantastic actors in it Margot Robbie, Leonardo DiCaprio, and the other guy whose name escapes me at the minute. <laughs> the People Under the Stairs, a Wes Craven 80s horror. It's like I wouldn't really say it's a horror as such. It's like, it is, but it isn't. It's not, because like watching it now, it's not very scary at all. But like when I was a kid, I found it quite scary and it's weird and it's like all these people living but in the walls and stuff like that. And it had like these weird gimps in it and it was pretty freaky at the time. But watching it now as an adult, it's pretty tame and it's very 80s and it's like not something I particularly want to watch again. At now but it does have nostalgic nostalgia it holds nostalgia uh, um, the youth in revolt this is a brilliant film I think it's like one of them sort of underrated films a little bit because I don't hear many people talking about it it's quite old now I guess it came out in the, the 2000s early 2000s starring Michael Serra and I think Michael Serra is a fantastic actor uh, comedic actor he just got a really good presence and it's about a guy with sort of split personality um, to try and woo this girl so he's got this bad side and his good side it's a good film 30 days a night one of my favorite vampire films really good Batman begins it's where Batman begins a Christopher Nolan film <clears throat> This is one of my recent pickups, Django Unchained. I got this very cheap and it is brutal. I, I'd, I'd say it's one of Tarantino's most brutal films because some of the scenes in, depicted in it. Um, it's really good as well. I do I do love this film, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite Tarantino film by any, by any stretch, but it's, it's, it's really good and it's up there. But I don't know, some of the scenes, I just it took me out of it a little bit because it was so unrealistic. And I know he has a sort of a theme of doing that in some of his films where it's like, um, you know, the other one, Inglorious Bastards, where he kills Hitler and everything like that. But I don't know, it just seems, it just took me out of it a little bit, but this. Anyway, it's a good film all the same. I'm not knocking it. But yeah, 
this is another one of my cheaper pickups that I got, The Departed, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's a really good actor, as if you see him in a lot of my films, because I think he's great. Um, and this is a good sort of police detective type one. Um, there's also stars the, the great Jack Nicholson. It's just a fantastic film. Matrix Reloaded, I got this pretty cheap. And I'm glad I got it for cheap because it's not very good I, on rewatch. I don't think it's very good. I, the original film is the only one that really holds up for me. The sequels, Matrix sequels, I wasn't really fussed with. The Dark Knight is a really good film. You know the score. It's a really good film. Heath Ledger, etc. Starship Troopers is like a brilliant film. I love this film to death. It's like a 90s sort of sci-fi action film that has a lot of what's the word i'm trying to think of it was directed by the same guy as robocop so it has that kind of satire within it and it's um it's really good and it holds up really well this is another one of my recent pickups ex machina really good film about the turing test um, the Turing test, which is like basically whether a robot or a artificial intelligence can convince a man that they are human, basically. And that is what this guy has to do when he's faced with this female robot. And she uses her um, feminine ways, shall we say, even though she isn't actually a female, she's a robot, to get the best of the human. Not to ruin anything or anything like that. But yeah, this is another one of my recent ones. I haven't even took the stickers off it yet. This was only two pounds, I think it was. The Equalizer, really good film, um, starring Denzel Washington. They're on the third one now. I haven't seen the third one still. I've seen the second one, and it wasn't as good as the first one. I really love the first one. So I need to see the third one, because I've heard good things. This is one of my favorite... Uh, comedies about vampires not that there's that many comedies about vampires but it's one of my favorite comedies um it is by what's his name taika watiti and jermaine clement jermaine clement i used to watch on the flight of the concords which was a really funny um comedy series that um, used to be on in the early 2000s or whatever it was but it was really funny and this is kind of like a documentary sort of a spoof documentary on vampires and it's just brilliant i love all the extras and stuff that comes with this great great film come to daddy starring elijah wood i can't even remember when i bought this because i just found it in my cupboard it's an old dvd and i've seen it once i can't really remember what it's about but it's got elijah wood in it and i think it was like a horror comedy but yeah i've got that can't really remember what it's about Shutter Island, really good, um, tense thriller starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Michelle Williams. And this is a fantastic film. I love this film. I've seen it a lot of times now. So I have to, it's one of them things where I have to give it a break before I watch it again in a long time. It's a Martin Scorsese directed film. So it's fantastic. Ted Seth MacFarlane, I think his name is, that's his name, isn't it? Seth MacFarlane. Um, really funny comedy, you know the drill. Um, he's recently brought out a comedy TV series, which I'm just in the middle of watching at the moment, which is quite funny too. Um, yeah, but this this is really good. I love the, f the first one. The second one is good, but not as good as the first one, I don't think. <clears throat> I love these Planet of the Apes films, the modern ones. The Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is the second of the of the series and it's actually i used to think i preferred the first one but on rewatch of this one i think i prefer this one now because it's got a lot of action in it and it i think it just i just i'm just with the progression of the story and sort of like i'm i mean a lot more interested in where the story is going and as opposed to where it began now so and, the, and there's a new film coming out the kingdom of the planet of the apes I think that's due out this year so that should be really good too 
I picked this up for really cheap as well because I had to do it because I didn't have it. Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3. It's it's not the best film, let's, let's be honest, but it's it's got a lot of nostalgia and it's still good in parts. Um, True Grit, starring Jeff Bridges and a young Haley Steinfeld. Uh, good remake of an old cowboy film. Good film. Teen Wolf starring Michael J. Fox, 80s horror, uh, 80s comedy. I'd say horror comedy, but it's not horror. There's no horror involved, but it's, it's, it's a good, it's cheesy 80s stuff. Under the Silver Lake is a really good DVD um, starring Andrew Garfield. It's weird. It's one of those A24 ones. So, you know, you're getting all this weird indie shit and I love my weird indie shit. And yeah, just really good brilliant film and it stuck in my head a long time so I'm so glad I picked this one up The Dark Knight Rises my least favorite of the trilogy but you know when you, once you've started you got to finish I say and it's still got some good points in it good moments in it Hereditary really good modern horror film that's freaky psychological and sticks in your head for a bit Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the first of the original trilogy. I say original, the most modern trilogy of the Planet of the Apes films. And very good. Carrie, the classic horror starring Sissy Spacek. And it's brilliant. It's a fantastic film. I love it. Paul starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost is a funny-ish comedy about some nerds going to a comic-con and they come across a real alien and adventure ensues the wolfman this is a tin steelbook um they say steel but it that shit ain't steel it's tin i don't know whatever the fuck but yeah it's it's got a nice cover the, the old 50s horror whatever it is 30s i don't even know what it is i don't know years and i don't know names okay sue me but it's, it's a good film 22 jump street on the other hand is a bad film i don't know why i have it the crow classic starring brandon lee son of bruce lee his last film brilliant film still good to this day They've tried remaking it and just haven't succeeded so far. Gran Torino, good film, starring Clint Eastwood. I think he directed it as well. Back to the Future Trilogy. And Red Rocket. This is a film directed by Sean... Again, I can't remember his name. Sean Baker. And Sean Baker has some really good films. Those sort of weird fly in the wall type realism films that are just a slice of life but with something weird going on and yeah this, this is a really good film so that is my blu-ray collection now on to the 4ks um kong skull island i didn't think i was gonna like this film when i when i first went to watch it a few years back and I was really surprised by how much I did like it and it looks really good and the sound on this 4k is really good as well it really stands out and it's a yeah it's a fantastic film and um, it's a shame I didn't really like any of the the following sequels to these films because I just haven't so but yeah that one I really liked The Northman um, the Robert Eggers film about Vikings really good looks really good as well good quality i literally bought this one yesterday this is really cheap as well the deadpool 2 super cut and it's got like so many extras and it's got four discs in it and everything and it was only a fiver this was so this was a really good deal and yeah really enjoyable and it looks great too akira the manga classic looks really good predator absolutely love this film if if i had to one day i'll do a list of my all-time favorite films and this is 100 on it predator it's brilliant 
Stephen King, Christine, fantastic 80s horror slash thriller, whatever you want to call it, because it's not that gory or anything. But um, Martin, another Martin Scorsese film, Casino, really good film, uh, very long film and all that, but you know how he does. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's great film. Robert De Niro. Blade. Starring Wesley Snipes. Great, love it. Pulp Fiction, another one of these sort of steelbook jobs. Classic film, I had to own this on 4K. And that sort of looks like they're dancing when you move it like that. I did do. But yeah, brilliant film, love it. Again, steelbook for um, Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. Love this film. Again, it looks fantastic on 4K looks so good i got this a little while back enter the dragon another classic this is beyond my all-time faves of all time as well brilliant film shit my battery's running out i'll be right back my battery's running out shit. okay sorry about that my battery died um and also forgot um Another Blu-ray that I picked up, Dread. Really good film, I love this film. And um, unfortunately, that this Blu-ray didn't look amazing or anything, but apparently the 4K doesn't either because it's, because of the, the, I think it was filmed in 3D or something to do with that. And it's, it doesn't look bad. It looks, it, it's like visually okay to look at and everything, but um, it's very sort of like grainy and weird. It's sort of like, it's got what the visual shit I've got going on at the minute. Kind of looks a bit like that, apart from without the white lines and the, but yeah, it's, but it's good film, great film, fantastic film. I wish they'd make another one. Anyway, back to the 4Ks. The Big Lebowski, funny, brilliant, excellent 90s. Robocop, if this was gonna be on the all time favorite films of all time, this would definitely be on it. I love this film. And I'm currently playing the Robocop computer game on the PS5 and that's so good too. Um, but yeah, this I love this film. The Lost Boys, another contender for the all-time favourite list, just because it's just so good, so rewatchable. Dracula, I love this film. I love the costumes in it. I love everything in it, bar Keanu Reeves, because Keanu Reeves sticks out like a sore thumb in this film. But hey, you can't be mad at Keanu Reeves, can you really? Trading Places, 80s comedy at its best with one of my favourite comedians of all time, Eddie Murphy. And it's a fantastic film. It's brilliant. I love it. And still holds up to this day. You know, even though a lot of people would say, you can't say these things nowadays and you can't do this nowadays. No, you, maybe you can't. But this was those days. You know what I mean? You, that's, it was those days. So whatever. It's still fucking funny. It's a funny film. Stand By Me, I love this film, Stephen King, um, brilliant soundtrack, It this looks fantastic as well on 4K and it's just really, really great film, love it. The Shining, this would definitely be in my favourite films of all time, um, it looks fantastic on 4K and it's a brilliant film and it is a classic by in every sense of the word. True Romance, I really enjoy this film. Um, this looks like a, re a really good um, 4K picture as well. Although some people have said, uh, I, I saw a, a review of somebody saying, because it had like a hazy effect on the original film and it, this, this apparently has gotten rid of that hazy effect, but that doesn't bother me at all. It looks very clear and the picture is crystal clear and I love it and I love the film. John Carpenter's They Live, like a really good, paranoia conspiracy film and it's just really good film a lot of fun a lot of action and um what's his name rowdy roddy piper is great in this as well as keith david the fight scene is classic for a reason because it just goes on for so fucking long and it's so good i love a good war film and this dunkirk is a fantastic film um it isn't sort of like necessarily focused on one protagonists or anything like that one specific story it just follows and weaves through sort of different members of the air land and sea 
during World War Two and and the Battle of Dunkirk and it's just really good. <laughs> Love it. Shit, just dropped a load. <laughs> alien. I mean it's alien. But you know what? For me, I love Alien is, is a fantastic film, but I saw Alien Aliens first when I was a kid. I saw that film first, and that was an action film, and then this is like a more of a horror film and a more suspense film. But the suspense was taken away because I already know what's gonna happen. So this film has kind of been ruined for me before I ever watched it. But and like the the alien in the costume looks like a man in a costume to me, so that a certain scenes with it which they improved by the second one the second one so the second one to me is is my favorite alien film but this is a classic and it's a classic for a reason and if i'd seen it without having seen the second one first and i was a bit older when i saw it then i'm sure i would have thought this is amazing and the the transfer on this is is excellent the soundtrack is excellent and it's an excellent film grease i love grease i love the um, the songs I love that it just sort of sticks in your head the whole sort of cheesiness of it all um, this is a really good transfer it looks fantastic um, yeah so Grease The Matrix the proper good film that has actual sort of substance to the plot and it and it is uh, an existential it makes you think it looks good Keanu Reeves is fantastic in this, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's a really good film. And then the sequels just went ahead and ruined it. I Am Legend was a really good film when I first saw it. Now, watching this on 4K, it sort of glaringly shows up the CGI of the zombies and everything like that, and they look really out of place. So it kind of ruined the film for me a little bit. I wish they'd redo this film, but like with updated CGI or maybe even practical effects because it's a really good film and a really good premise and Will Smith is really good in this and he doesn't slap anybody in it he just shoots people um, speaking of zombies this is a great fucking film George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead it's a classic the 1970s not the remake um, this is like a nice packaging everything I love this about this DVD um yeah, and it's got loads of extras and everything like that. It was a fantastic film. And I used to have the sort of mall music as my ringtone. And it sticks in my head. The Witch. I love this fucking film so much. I love this film. It's like a mod. In my eyes, it's a modern classic. It's one of those films that people either seem to love or hate. I absolutely love it. And I recommended it to somebody the other day. They watched it and they said it was slow and boring and didn't like it. And I'm like, what? This is, it's tension. It's like building tension and the, the, the payoff is so good and the acting is so good and like everything about it is just, I love it. And this is a really good transfer. I love this film. And finally, Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Great film. So that's it. Those are my updated um, DVDs, Blu-rays and 4Ks that I've collected. Um, thank you very much. If you've watched it all the way through to here, you get a special bonus kiss. There you go. Mwah. I love you. You're so beautiful. Until the next video. God bless. Goodbye.